today Europe can propose the principles and rules that will shape a new global order. No, I think this would be the time because you really need to bring China into the creation of a new uh, 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 world order, financial world order. In the financial crisis, Europe is leading the way towards the global solution. We will have the kind of global government governance that is necessary to ensure the stability and transparency of markets in a way that gives us the benefits of a globalized market economy. The goal should be to devise a system of global financial governance adapted to the challenges of the 21st century. 2009 is also the first year of global governance with the establishment of the G20 in the middle of the financial crisis. The climate conference in Copenhagen is another step towards the global management of our planet. One of the elements of where they want to take the world is a, a third world war, which they wish to involve um, Europe, uh, the United States, and well, Canada, North America, and um, Russia and China. I was told by insiders in the 1990s uh, about in America that uh, the plan was to, to lead to a conflict involving China. The third world war would be triggered out of the Middle East, involving Israel as the trigger, and would um, bring about the final global conflict, uh, which would lead to them being able to offer the solution to stop this ever happening again, which would be a world government and a single world army. And the idea of that is to say, if we have a single world army, and we bring an end to nation, national armies, then we can't ever again have a war. What they won't tell you is those that have manipulated the war will be the same people that offer the solution to the war, which is exactly the structure of control that they want. And if you look at the world after, the, after a war, it's never the same as it was before, especially uh, world wars. And they want this third world war to change the, the, the face of global society to the point where they can introduce this centralized global uh, structure. Um, and uh, as they used to say in, in, in the 1960s with the Vietnam War, what would happen if we had a war and no one turned up? There'd be no war. What these people do is they declare wars and they get the rest of us to fight them. What we've got to do is stop fighting them and stop falling for this scam. Because if we do, if we go into this third world war, then, you know, goodbye freedom. And these new and old major powers face still yet another novel reality, in some respects unprecedented. And it is that while the lethality, the lethality of their power is greater than ever, their capacity to impose control over the politically awakened masses of the world is at a historical low. I once put it rather pungently, and I was flattered that the British Foreign Secretary repeated this as follows. Namely, in earlier times, it was easier to control a million people, literally. It was easier to control a million people than physically to kill a million people. Today, it is infinitely easier to kill a million people than to control a million people. It is easier to kill than to control. And of course, that bears directly on the use of force, particularly by societies that are culturally alien over other societies. And never forgetting also that there is this other unseen hand 
that knows absolutely what consciousness is, who are experts in that fact. You're walking around, couldn't care less. You're waiting for the next movie to come out and the next fashion and all that, what Hollywood's going to do next. But, but there's people there who have, who have a thorough understanding of human consciousness, human psyche, human libido, and they're working on it 24 seven to feather their own nests and also to keep man in servitude, man whom they think is their creation. They, don't, they, they think of man as just being one of their own. But the, these individuals don't really have any fear of us. Well, they do have fear of us to the extent that they know if we were awakened what we could do. I'm deeply troubled that a very vague, emotionally stated, semi-theologically defined diagnosis of the central global menace is obscuring our national ability to comprehend the historically unprecedented challenge which is being posed in our time by a massive global political awakening and thus is obstructing our ability to deal effectively with the global political turmoil that this awakening is generating. So the, their motive of um, why they would want to dumb down people is also highly practical. Remember, these people are very, very practical. They may be evil, but they're also very practical. They know that you don't want a mass of intelligent, free-thinking, self-aware, proactive, deeply concerned, spiritually empowered people. That's the worst threat that they can imagine. So they have, it's very practical for them to keep people, you know, one, what do they call it? One leash for one neck. Everybody in a complete sense of concern with the illusion that they're independent. It doesn't work without that. The Matrix is a system, Neil. That system is our enemy. When you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters, the very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system that they will fight to protect it. Were you listening to me, Neo? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? I was... Look again. 